Worlds! Welcome back! Just one tiebreaker game remains, and it is Lao taking on the evil genius as the winner. We'll be seen directly into the group stage qualification round. What does that mean? Well, the loser is staring down a long road to groups. I'm gonna explain this for you in just a moment. So, Loud are taking on evil geniuses. What we can see from the game that just happened, Det FM are already seated in the fourth spot. The winner of this game, let's assume it is loud, will then advance to this matchup and avoid RNG on the bracket, while the loser will then take on Det FM. Well, we can undo that one and make it a little clearer here, shall we? There we go, okay? The reason for this is, of course, we want to have the best of five to determine who the second and third seeds are from the respective group. They will then battle the second seed from the opposing group. Obviously, this can get flipped if we clear it and EG win, which I think is what a lot of viewers watching our stream will want. That will then put Loud to that matchup against Det F. M. Now, with the bracket explained and making sense, it is time to set the stage for Brazil taking on North America. I'm going to rejoin my analysts. Welcome back. Uh, oh, what's that? As now we step up. Oh, a mid-gap. Okay. okay, I got you. <laughs> as you can see, Jojo the Bird is joining us. Before we talk about the game, before we talk about the players, gentlemen, I want to ask what this means for Brazil and North America. And talk about what it means for you as an LCS fan and viewer, looking at this, knowing you can dodge RNG, knowing that makes that path to groups easier, and maybe chronicle what it means for the regions. Rez, let's start with you. The first things first, I mean, yes, the stakes are important, but also if you think about it historically, I remember 2015 when CLG was knocked out of groups, but they had to face Pain, and Pain ended up beating them. It was BRTT on his Draven versus the vein of Doublelift, and it was from that point forward, you never heard the end of it. So yes, it's important for stakes, but also if you lose to Brazil, in this case loud, the fans are gonna be loud. <laughs> They're gonna let you know. And I'd argue that for both regions, you're not just fighting uh, for, for, for this match, right? For getting a better seating. I think whoever ends up facing RNG, it's doomed. I know RNG have shown Fair. some weakness, but this team in a best of five, I think is too big for anyone in planes. I wouldn't even bet on DRX uh, in a best of five scenario. So this might be the best of one that decides which of the two uh, teams actually makes it to groups. I think that is a fair statement to make, especially when you look at the strength of RNG. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else at home, I want you to spam in chat right now who will win this game. LLL, you need three of them, or EG. Please consider this. Evil Geniuses will be starting on the red side of this game and have not won a red side game at World's Play-Ins. They have won every blue side game. With that being said, Quick I'm gonna start with Loud. Raz, break them down for I'm me. just gonna say immediately, make the right choice. You were wrong the last time around. I'm telling you right now, if you make the wrong choice again. But for Loud, it starts with Bronze and uh, Seos. I feel like they are incredibly confident in how their, their abilities in taking 2v2s. And we saw what they did versus Fnatic's ball lane. Made it very clear. Bot gap, baby. Made it very clear. And I feel like their team fights have been on point, primarily because the draft's helping them ex ex exceptionally. And on top of that, I think Robo's here to play. Not only is it, I think, the strongest part of Loud, uh, barring maybe top, I think Robo's had an incredible tournament thus far, but it's also, to me, the weakest part of EG, specifically the laning phase, uh, or rather the uh, way that if they get shot down in the laning phase, I think, Kari in lane specifically has done a good job, yeah. but in team fights he struggled. And if they don't get a lead through the lane, I think it gets really hard to win mid to late game team fights. Chronicler, how much advantage does Loud have not only having a little bit of extra rest time, arguably maybe fatigue, but also watching what EG just did? Does this play into their favor? 
Ooh, mm, I, I don't know if it does. I think Ooh. EG actually has continued to rev up. I didn't okay. have faith in let, the rev up. It's let me move us game. on. I've just got the night. We're maybe two minutes away from draft. I've got a few things left to do. Let's take a look at some Evil Geniuses team statistics throughout the course of the play-in stage. Looking at first blood percentage, half of the games. First tower, first dragon as well. All of them 50%. The amount of time that they have spent in a major lead, that's worth more than 52% of the total gold in the game, is 45%. That is significantly higher than I was expecting. Yes, and a lot of it, a lot of people would be not surprised by it. Yeah. Because when they had those advantages, at times they throw them. And that's my big asterisk to Evil Geniuses. The things that have helped as they went on in the tournament is the fights they have chosen has simply been better. A lot of their failures have been fighting within choke points when they have an advantage. There would be like a huge uh, play that would be started by impact and they would funnel in and they would die off those. So I think they've gotten better at choosing the right fights. I believe we're about a minute, minute and a half away to go. We just saw Loud on your screen, Brancé screaming his lungs out. Let's see what the results are from the fans at home. What have they predicted you guys better be choosing right. from chat? Waiting for that to pop up in just a moment. It is 73% Loud. Brazil? Vamos, Loud has popped up with less than 30 seconds. I need predictions from my analysts, one or two lines as to why. Chronicler, you go first. Jojo and Inspire, top five, baby. Let's get it, EG. Chat, this is getting embarrassing. It's Evil Genius is taking this one. Well, there we go. The chat was correct. Incorrect on the previous game, 48%. Yep. This time, though, 77%. We are moments away from the game that will decide who will be able to skip RNG. Let's find out who it'll be. Freak, Jack, take it away. Hello and welcome back to our final game of the day. Who is getting second place in this group? Winning means you are waiting for a best of five against the winner of Saigon Buffalo and Mad Lions. You win that, you are into the group stage of the World Championship. Yeah. If you lose this game, you are playing a best of five tomorrow against that Asian Focus Me. Mm -hmm. And then you, if you win that, you then best of five, Royal Never Give Up, the reigning MSI champions. Yeah. Winning makes the road much easier. It does. But if you're trying to play as many games as possible, <laughs> uh, you could, I'm, I'm kidding. Chat, Chat, here's the problem though. There's only five games against RNG at most, probably three. <laughs> there are six in the group stage at Worlds. If you want the most games, you actually want to win this one, Chat. Yeah, RNG definitely <laughs> the monster under your bed. Yeah. And needing to win this game. Uh, it's easily the most important game either of these teams have played at Worlds so far. So the last time these teams played against each other, Loud actually amassed a three and a half thousand gold lead by 23 minutes and threw it Baron. So EG won that one. Uh, otherwise, you'd be having a much different conversation. One thing I'll, I'll point out, JoJo always does a lot of banter and chat in mm. pregame lobby. Really? Loud was matching it. Like, they yeah. were just both spamming as much as possible. They were pretty quick getting in game. They were in lobby for like 30 seconds, just like typing madly at each other, and then they start <laughs> the game. But both these teams are ready to throw down. So, blue side, Callista ban, no Akali, no Silas either for Jojo Pyun. So, obviously, pretty intelligently targeted bans. Callista not always seen as a blue side ban, but certainly yeah. one here. Uh, it is what Kyrie played in their win. Th that is also what Jojo said. He said, ban Akali, Silas, go, 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 go. Yep. So they listened. I mean, uh, that is the strategy. So it's going to be Sejuani coming through. Worth noting that actually EG ban a lot of champions that they had played. Their winning comp against Cloud was actually Aatrox and Maokai and this ban Kalista here as well. So not allowed any of those picks here. Sejuani, an early flex, a solid tank jungle or a actually a really good laning top laner. Obviously, you can frontline afterwards as well. They say, you know, if we're not playing Assassins, then we can just go Azir meta and try to win team fights. Very true. JoJo is a very good Azir player, a fairly generically safe mid laner now that the other three of that power mid laners are down with Silas Polybands. It yep. does leave like a LeBlanc pick open if they wanted to go for that. But I think I think right now EG is thinking team fight. It changes a little bit if they lock in Belvap. Yeah, you look at Tenone's sort of champion pool since MSI, it's a bunch of Ari, okay, sure, Talia, and then it's down to like Lissandra three games, Zoe two games, the South that he had played a bunch of has been banned out. We are back on Trundle here for Inspired, generally yep. considered very good into Sejuani. Yep. Thanks for walking in the melee range, I'll hold you, thanks for the stats, now I'm the front line. Obviously his early jungle pressure was outstanding in the early game against DFM. Yeah, and part of why EG won that first game they had against Loud is they had really strong scaling in their team composition. 
that's something that Inspired mentioned in his post-game interview when he had the Maokai is, yeah, you know, I don't know if playing against RNG-type teams if we'll be able to get away with scaling, but for these type of games, it's worth it. And their early draft very much says they're not going to be super aggressive early, and they're picking for team fighting. All righty. We'll see what they can track then as far as jungle moves are concerned, because Duane can certainly do a lot with her lanes. Now, doesn't have a melee mid laner, no Silas there, so that is one possible synergy gone. Top lane usually almost exclusively melee, and with Misfortune locked in, you can always grab Nar here and cover it. Or we'll see something else coming through. Misfortune, of course, very, very strong. Mumu is left up for now. The Singed Mid not going to come through unless you're going to shove Azir into the top lane. But yeah. I think eyes are on the chance at a Mumu Misfortune. This is the comp that beat Fnatic. It's actually the comp they had played against EG and nearly won with. So I would mm. expect an Amumu ban or a support takeaway on four here. Yeah, 100%. I think Amumu will be banned in the next two bans by EG. Interesting how they're early picking support to ban them out. So they're basically saying, okay, our AD carry pool is deeper than what we think our support pool into MF is. Sure. Which I actually buy, honestly. I mean, we have basically no AD carry bans. There's the Mumu instantly banned yeah, away. Yeah. Why, wise choice there. But yeah, if you're looking at good engage tanks, I think Leona is, to me, the cream of the crop. I put her as my highest death champion, by the way, because I thought she'd be in almost every game. And supports tend to die, unfortunately. They don't get very much gold. So, uh, you know, I know there's a bunch of like Nautilus chatters in, in Reddit every time, but I'm like, no, 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 it needs to be Leona. Come on, be, be on it. Uh, Orin can be dropped away, though, as uh, team fight ults. You talk about the scaling differences, Toronto can front line, Azir can back line. Orin makes sure those fights happen. Uh, but yeah, Leona is there to guarantee interrupt MF ults. Of course, Toronto Pillar can do the same thing. I think it's probably the single best skill for that, but mm. in case it's not up, they'll can play that job. And we're not even seeing any AD carry bans, so if he wants the Felios, uh, he's played some uh, Ezreal as well recently. It's still up for him. This Jax ban is actually rather interesting. I think that signals that impact, well, one, Robo is good Jax, but two, that impact might actually want to pick his top laner blind rather than trying to get the counter pick. It's something he's done for most of his career. He's just been so good at blind picking top laners. It'll also allow Kauri to have oh, wow. a longer look at AD carry if they choose that. Or, you know, they can just throw down and pick Draven, but we'll, we'll see. If you want to play through exactly one lane, if you're like, we're going to have jungle prial, this is us. And it's like, well, Draven Leona has you under your tower, and we think we can track yeah. Brock. Then, like, oh. I can see it, but this is the, we definitely win okay. the 35 minute team fights. Deal with it. Goes a little bit somewhere else. Okay, Kaisa, I would argue he's actually slightly less of a strong laner yeah. uh, than the Aphelios. I actually think Aphelios should be prioritized over Kaisa for what I've seen from these players. Certainly, she's very dynamic, right? If you get a good pick, uh, Pillar will add a plasma attack. You can ult on, you can follow through, you assassinate someone. If you're yeah. trying to be a little more aggressive, a little more hyperactive, like that'll land. Uh, but much less safety for the back line. Yeah, I do think that Aphelios there is also very killable. Sejuani, Chalia, sure. uh, Misfortune yeah, can no get on him. You. Whereas the last angle they picked Aphelios in, they had a Thresh to peel. Um, so understandable, but they don't have that many synergies throughout the rest of the team composition for Kai'Sa yet. And they did actually choose to counterpick Impact's top laner instead of counterpicking AD as fifth. Technically, Talia's flexible. Talia could jungle, Zach could go mid. I don't know if it's exactly an Azir counter. Um, Talia mid, of course, far more likely. It's in the pool. And we get Diego out of the top. jungle. So it is Sedge top after all decides that this is what I want. I want to play it out this way. Fair enough here. This wouldn't be the worst Mordekaiser, actually, for him. Speaking my language. But he's he's got some options here. Nar is still available if they want to be generic. Yep. Oh. I like this more. I actually like this quite like a lot. <laughs> more damage scaling from the three carry lanes, by the way. We've got front line, we've got team fight engaged. Not a lot of disengaged, to be fair. Oh. It's the Mordekaiser angle. Yes, okay. we are there again. Trust your instincts, freak. Woo! I saw the angle. You were right about <laughs> the angle. Uh, GP would have been really good, too, against Misfortune uh, in team fights, just being able to drop the ult on her head. But there's a lot of good targets for the Mordekaiser. And this is what we talked about as well. Uh, when you're up against Nautilus, he can just take the Nautilus out at the start of any fight blow through that guy and then basically the Mordekaiser can take out one front line the Trundle can take out the other front line and it can let them mow through the fights with the Azir damage so uh, this is a champion impact is very practiced yeah. with in my opinion it, it's like it's just this weird feeling impact just does more yeah. damage on Mordekaiser than other players but we'll have to see because the last time they played loud they were down three and a half thousand gold to 20 minutes loud yeah. beat Fnatic earlier they pushed EG to the limit and this game is super important. It is super important. This is the battle for the second seed in the group with the honor of fighting the winner of Saigon Buffalo Mad Lions.
in two days for a spot in the group stage. That is the easier road than the one that goes through Royal Never Give Up. Solo Key Data and my intuition both put Mordekaiser as disgustingly favored against Sejuani in the top <laughs> lane. It's it's absurdly broken in your favor. He loves just siphoning a tank away because he's got a bunch of self damage. Yeah. We don't have escape tools against it. He wants Demonic Embrace. It's going to feel great. And even stealing away Viego prevents the resets. Viego's natural escape is pretty bad there as well. A wealth of good targets, honestly. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great angle. I think it's a really, really good pick here. I think it is a very intelligent time. And that is part of it, Chad, I think, is he picks it so rarely into the yeah. consort's really, really good. And I think it's a really, really good angle. We'll have to see how that turns out. Uh, the early game going to be very important as well. I mean, we have a Nautilus Leona on both teams. The potential for level one is quite high. Yep. Here we go. You can see the five stack here for EG. Is there an aggressive forward play? The answer is no. Seo, she's going to chill out. Easy ward play when he wants to go into like the 55 second ward plus recall. Certainly an option. You don't see anything spicy. They also don't know if there was an aggressive ward put on their tops. I don't believe anyone was remotely able to track if Sejuani or Viego did anything like that. Yeah, they placed one early ward uh, in their side top, top, uh, top side bush. Right, yeah. Which actually spots the Viego currently. So now they know that nobody is invaded, which will give Inspire to kind of a sense of relief since mm -hmm. that was a real possibility. And they're still going for a late invade since they oh. saw the Viego. A little Similar dicey. path to the previous game, actually, but I think Vision was just spotted. I think either maybe they knew there's no ward or they didn't have enough Vision to be like, well, okay, whatever. Another defensive ward comes down from Jedrakon as well. That'll track uh, primarily any of Viego's pathing. If he wants to do like red into invade, it'll see it. If he wants to red into early gank, it'll see it. Uh, so early Vision is there for about a minute and a half as everyone walks back to the lane and it's a nearly leashless jungle start. It is for Viego, but Mordekaiser does help Trundle as Inspired wants to path toward the bottom lane. It is double engage support. That makes sense. They're both running Ignite. Both AD carries are running Cleanse. Both AD carries also running uh, Lethal Tempo for as much pressure as possible. DPS is going to be pretty high. Lethal a little bit um, unorthodox on Misfortune. Press the attack is much more common, uh, to my understanding, at least from solo queue data. Look, um, at, uh, look at Inspired. So he actually oh, wow. he swept the ward on the way through here. So they technically know he could be doing this, but obviously don't know for sure. And yeah, he's just going to double buff super early. Viego's pass is interesting, though, because Viego's doing red raptors down to Krug. Maybe it's a, re it's a, it's a read off of the fact that, oh, yeah, my, my camps are getting taken. But he's actually ending up level three on bottom side. Yeah. In case there is a big play. Yeah, so it's possible that Croc could now invade the blue buff of EG since he saw Inspired cross through that ward, that Robo place that we're looking at right now, since they also have bot prior. So it's likely going to be fairly inconsequential unless they decide to go for a dive bottom lane as well. Yeah, that's just so interesting because, yeah, the mid ward's a really big deal that uh, Loud put down as Croc is indeed going to go ahead and say, all right, yep, I'm on bottom side. This guy's never been here. Uh, we, again, know about the blue steel. It means that you've got permanent coverage for your rumble, or sorry, you're your, your pushing Mordekaiser up against Sejuani. In fact, he's still around to get the wave in, but... Yeah, bottom jungle. Yeah. Diego's, I think, double camping. He's he's yeah. so he feels so safe. He's double camping blue grop, and is like, you're not gonna touch me. Yeah, I mean, the ward from Robo just did so much work. It spotted Inspired twice, and Inspired wouldn't actually think the croc is this greedy. I, I just imagine either Impact didn't call the ward or, or or didn't see it because otherwise, I don't think Inspired would be doing this. Uh, if he knew he was spotted on the ward, he'd actually do a mind game and just go for Krugs. Sure. Or sorry, uh, Gromp himself. But now he's doing. Yeah. He's thinking about it, but like he, he See, now, but he feels so unsafe. Technically, Viego should have recalled and should be back here by now. Could easily be. But and he's just flipping it. Like a bunch of camps. Okay, we'll go for wolves after all. That's going to be a pretty safe camp. Ironically, Gromp is arguably safer because you're not quite as far into enemy territory, but may just get both camps no problem. Uh, Viego is indeed on his recall. Of course, wolves are the lower value camp, and I think the way he's playing it, he's like, I'm just going to queue and smite this and get away. Yeah. Smite until okay, he's yeah, he'll finish someone. it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, now this does get awkward, because it is... Smote early. Oh, he early smites. There's actually... Well, second charge should be relatively soon, actually. This is about the timer for your second smite to come up yeah. anyway, or your third smite, so... This is a wild opener. This is very strange. So much in the fog of war. Croc just going to bypass all the vision, and here we go. He can start the play right now. It's going to be a bunch of stuns, and they don't have him around, so impact with a backwards E and a flash. W flash Woo! with all the sidestep! And that's going to make him live. If he doesn't sidestep that, that might have been the kill for Croc. I think high chance because Robo might have been able to get in range for the stun that was fully stacked up on him as well. 
I don't know if Impact can do much about this one, though. Keep in mind, there's an Ignite for the Sejuani. The Pillar finds a lot of time. If they turn around, though, could look very good. Keep in mind, Vulcan's double autos, in range, but too. Try. Robo doesn't no have flash. Robo doesn't have mana. And he goes down first blood. EG get it through top jungle. And the counter-picked Mordekaiser against the Ignite Sejuani ends up picking that up. That lane is going to go from rough to really rough for Robo, especially when Impact hits six. It's the way it gets pushed in. Vulcan's here to be like, Jojo, you're out of mana. I got you, buddy. We'll burn stacks in the melees. We'll put sunlight down for the soldiers. Get that wave down. Get your recall off. Of course, TP is already down, but needs a mana pool. Once again, though, he got the right top site. Now, Croc is low. He's just, he's just helping Robo get this wave in. Yeah. Otherwise, it gets really hard frozen on him. Just there for safety, but impact is just so strong. Yeah, and, and with your W, you can kind of tank this wave, no problem. Um, go ahead. And the build. Yep. We, we did all this Mordekaiser talk in the last yep. game. We had Mordekaiser. Yep, he's like, okay, I'm a bigger carry. I'm against a tank personally. I'm going to build so that I can kill this tank. I'm ahead. I'm a damage threat. It could be a bait. Impact could die here. He's got the shield, though. He needs to get unstunned in time. Pops it, and he's going to be tanky enough to Q slam. Oh! Mordekaiser mechanic, you pretty much always run last stand and revitalize. So he has 15% heal and shield power and 12% bonus damage when below 30% health. Saves the W at 20% and goes, I got a 500 point shield, buddy. You're dying and takes them both down. Well, that lane's gone pretty well for yeah. impact. 18 CS advantage, 3 and 0. 1,400 gold lead, Croc still level four, Jojo sends Tinones back, gets the ghost. Not quite pillarable. But everything that needed to go right for EG in this early game so far has. The questionable move would have been how they're not playing around bot lane at all, despite that working so well for them in the last game with the Aphelios. Inspired's path popped the whole time, he got impact the first kill, and here, it, like, Impact is just playing with so much confidence. Robo really wants to get the wave in, but he just gets hit by everything. Yep. Right? And he you gets so w low. Here. You W below a third. So, okay, yeah. he's been Ignite. Okay, that means I'm always W. I'm mashing the button. Yeah. And they can't burst 500 health, oh. so he gets 1,000. And it's like, oh, I just win now. Like, he yeah. just knows I just win now. So, Johnny's burst is gone. Her, e's on, her E pass is on cooldown. There's no damage left. Okay, I win. What an uncomfortable situation for Robo and Croc to play in when they're up against impacts Mordekaiser, saved for counterpick in the final tiebreaker game of the playing group stage. The whole game has been about impact so far. Yeah. Really nice. What a huge counter. It's looking pretty beautiful. Yoink. Nope. He's going to burn mana. And sure, the E cooldown is like 15, 12 seconds, something like that. But like, well, if I'm forced to 20 away every time, see you, bud. Three kills. Merc treads are on. Love it. The only way you're really going to lose any of these fights is getting stun locked. So doesn't really need to greed more damage. Uh, gonna look solid there. Even though Sejuani is not that heavily magic damage, actually has a decent physical profile. Just the tenacity itself, valuable against. I mean, everyone but Misfortune, tenacity has direct value against. So I think just a great boot buy for him. Move speed delta is a very big deal for Mordekaiser as well. You just want to be in range at all and look pretty good there. The wave can be pushed in level eight to six for now, but this wave will get Robo level seven. Yeah, and now it's about how does Loud think about a comeback here? Because when Impact has ultimate, you can't necessarily go to here this Mordekaiser. Look at that ridiculous total gold. Yeah, he's just going to start off with Harold. Um, but if Brands can get Kaur, he is six. You can't, you can't stop the Rifter with Mordekaiser's current power level. No, no it's, it's actually, it's can, actually impossible. You can try. Vulcan's already here. Sweeper spots him. Vulcan doesn't... Uh, actually, might have seen him pop through. So, yep, there's a smite. Inspired gets it. Wants to go for the okay. invade here on a croc. Has an ulti, has a flash. It doesn't matter. That is a delivery. Well done, Jojo Pyun. Following up the Canadians. Come in, get the ult combo in, and that is another dead jungler. Yeah, I mean, they still have... They have ult from Trundle, so Nautilus is dead. Seosh quite low. Burning, not quite dead. The Trundle's gonna be pretty close. Calorie. Gets his kill on the bottom side, a solo kill oh. down there. Vulcan flashes still drops. Tinones finally on the board here for Loud. Well, there we go. The really unfortunate solo kill uh, by Kauri over Brantz. I, I definitely feel like Loud is playing with a little bit of panic here. They've moved Robo down. They contested Rift Herald when they should have been trading for Infernal Drake. They went for an all in in the bot lane. They're hard forcing on Trundle mid. One of the three works. And now Tinones moves down. He has a decent angle, but. There's a Trundle, buddy. Trundle comes for the defense. And he's going to be fine. 
Yep, Tali ult came over. The first roam in the game from 10 owns, and it was a simple walk away. Impact doesn't even take damage here. He's like, okay, that, that's fine. I'm gonna go for a turret plate. Thank you, 160 gold. That is a wave. I think the word for this is rude. Yeah, anytime you can yeah. literally just like get auto attack and take a plate, it's like, oh, I'm so behind. You care so little about my damage that you're gonna face tank me on my turret. Yep, okay, it's doomed. Yeah, watching this 1v1 one more time, uh, basically, Cowie thinks Brance is moving up for a possible Rift Herald fight, so he's trying to move in the river. And then it's just about. Gotta land all his skill shots. Alts early. Follows Flash over the wall, and this has enough. Yep. Well played. Yeah, I understand MF not popping ults anytime early because you just, you ult for ult, you go behind him, and it's like, oh, I did nothing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, decides, okay, I'm just gonna ult for the shield. Let's just be in melee range. Gets it. Flash or flash and a solo kill, so well done, Cowrie. So we had a Dark Power Spike. Very good, as it turns out. and. Uh, gets the edge in a lane he was down CS on. In fact, still is. Yeah, and I think in general, Kaisa likes lanes where uh, she's isolated 1v1, especially against Misfortune because of that alt interaction. So, like, again, the Kaisa was picked with the Misfortune already shown. They let it go to 4-5, they let bans possibly come through, and they still picked the Kaisa early. So, Kaori showing up so far on that pick as well. And EG gonna get both objectives here. They have not won a single game on red side. And even when they fought against Loud earlier as blue, they were down 3,000 gold in 10 minutes time from this point on. But they are clearly winning. Kills across the board. Farm almost everywhere also. First Herald, now first Drake to add to it. EG have everything they want in this game. And it's just gonna be so hard for them to deal with impact because just like think about the way that uh, Loud would like to team fight in an ideal world, right? They have Nautilus and Sujuani in the front line and that can allow, maybe maybe Talia comes in from the side, that allows them to set up for a nice misfortune ultimate. However, both of their frontliners can just get killed by ultimates that EG has. So Impact can ult one of the frontline, kill him because he's so far ahead. It could literally be this is one if he wants to. And then Inspired ults the other one to steal their resistances. And the front to back is just so unbelievably superior for EG. But then you think, okay, if you're not front to back, you need to be able to push a side lane and get a flank. But literally no one can push a side lane against Impact's Mordekaiser. Yep. So they kind of need to get lucky or to have EG make a mistake because the position EG is in right now is so strong. At least they're gonna get top scuttle. All right, a little bit of something going on here. One objective is gonna be dropped. In fact, they're gonna skip it to push for top side. Now Impact can always guarantee about seven seconds of 1v1 time. But yeah. if the rest come across, it is top jungle versus top. And I don't know if they win this. Well, they're gonna have to try. They are selling out for it. Talia cannot join just yet. I'm just gonna let them walk away. They land the first time. They don't ulti, they don't go for any more. Yeah. Deciding that, nah, if he ulti, it's too much. And Apex says, yep, I know. So, burns W for the self-heal. Goes on the moderate cooldown. That gets the, the heal value in for the shield. I think a really nice placement of this Rift Herald as well. They know impact is going to be fine. So let's get gold on others, they say. They can't really kill that turret. It's got massive resistances right now. Yep. The next we'll get the eye here, and the wave is nearly gone. It is low, though, and if they can cut this wave, yeah. they can just wait 30 seconds to get it next time. Carry puts in what damage he can. Oh. It's actually pretty good here. Stopwatch is forced out no of Vulcan. Flash. Pretty crucial. Wants to dive in, lands a stun, Whoa. and here comes the ref, but is it enough? Vulcan drops one for zero, and here comes Viego for more. He dives the back line. He traded one for one. Still, a fight. Victory for Loud without Mordekaiser. His TP is down. They take a fight, and they go up in it. Definitely the fight that Loud dreams of. A fight that is 4v4 in between their own turrets and no Mordekaiser is to be seen. That's the only time they have a chance. EG goes in because Vulcan was caught out with no flash, so he decides to go in. Everyone just decides to follow the call for EG and they lose the fight two for one. This turret though is a hit. It's 400 gold that he could deny. Actually, yeah, he should have let like the cannon hit it. 39, it's pretty close. Oh, he just gets it here. So that move is 400 gold. Oh, because if you deny it, his auto did 17, so he actually would have died if he yeah, I mean, for he three did two full more. But the problem is, I don't, yeah. So, so the turret's always 250 global, no matter what happens. But its first turret, which is only local gold, and every outer turret is 250 local as well. So, like that getting denied is a individually 400 gold, uh, like itemized out as local. Yeah, watching this one more time, just a really good wall by Tenones right here, combo yeah. with the hook. Yes, there's a stopwatch, but Vulcan still does not have flash here. So uh, he's either dead or he looks to turn it. And everyone on EG is feeling confident and they go in. But it's just, look at that stun up top by Jojo, unable to get in to the fight the way he wants to. Otherwise, they might have been able to wombo with the Azir ultimate. Could have been a lot worse, too, if Croc gets that reset. He might have been able to chase more of them down. But it is a two for one in the favor of Loud. We said it was 3,000 gold lead. 
EG having what Loud had in their most recent matchup. Yeah. EG came back through it. See if Loud can do the same. Blue is going to be handed over to Tin Owns. The Mordekaiser gap has not grown in farm. He has farmed a couple of plates, right? That top lane took about half HP, but has yet to join a team fight. See what those look like as his fire takes a bit of a chunk. 80 seconds from next Drake spawn. EG have the first, they can grab the second, no problem. You can see that he did heavily, heavily outfarmed on plates. Yeah. Now going for second level, Herald. Level 11 on Mordekaiser, so anyone gets in range of this Mordekaiser, they likely yeah. die. The only ulti rank on Mord is cooldown on it, so it's not a big stat increase, but is there even a play? Does he walk up for Robo? You can see he's kind of frontlining. Pops an early shield, gets smited, and he just grabs Seosh. That yeah. is a guaranteed kill, Nautilus. Not much else you can do. Well, he's got a good job can, fighting. He but might... the rest of the squad can come around, so here comes the play. And there's not much else for him to get out of this one. A scoop comes through for the Azir. Tino's over the wall, flats to safety. There's the kill, as Robo's already gone. Inspired sticking onto him, and the reinforcements just will not arrive. He dances around pillars and hands oh. the kill off. A double through for Kauri. Here, Kauri, have some gold. Yes. That's inspired in the end of that fight. Uh, very difficult situation for Loud to be in. I think if they were to have that one again, they would opt to trade objectives because it is just so hopeless in those 5v5s against the Fed, Mordekaiser, and Trundle. So EG get the first turret there. They get the Rift Herald. They still have it. Impact can probably finish off this turret as well to make it three turrets to zero. And this game just exploded. He's just playing the deny farm at this point. So gets the emote game going on. Says, okay, as long as cannon goes away, that's enough for me. And that's the gold income coming in. Denies a fair bit of gold and XP from a would-be top laner. Growing that lead, 3-0 and 3. I believe that EG is going to be giving up that dragon. So we're going to watch this one more time. Yeah, that's Impact just doing a defensive ult of like, yeah. ah, I'm taking too much damage here. W's on cooldown. I'll just ult Nautilus. Yep. Can't kill me. 4v4 is still good. Like, this is a 4v4 without Nautilus, but the problem is it's also, like, or without Mordekaiser, but there's no front line. Yeah, and Nautilus only gets to live through that Mordekaiser all at once because he used a stopwatch. He'll never get that again. Yeah. Uh, it is now broken. So, EG follows at the end of the fight, feeding the kill over to Tinones. Tinones hoping to have another legendary world's moment for those historians out there. The 2014 This Is For Kaboom moment when they beat Alliance to knock them out of worlds. Tinones was the mid laner on Kaboom back then. Been yep. training for eight years, trying to get back to that point. Still has an opportunity, win or lose, will not be eliminated from Worlds. Loser of this game plays DFM in a best of five tomorrow for the hopes of playing RNG in a best of five to they qualify after. for group stage. So definitely an easier path. The winner here will advance to the games two days from now, where they will they play the, then play the winner of Mad Lions versus Saigon Buffalo. So those are the stakes as EG yeah. has this 6,000 gold lead and a very powerful team fight call. They really do. We've got Anathema's already through for the Trundle to even knock down the Tenacity. That much more on a frontliner he would like to kill. As the scaling continues on, Luden's in here for Jojo. Steel caps through the EG jungler now as well as we are on solidly one item each AD carry. The farm at least has been decent for Bronze, but still a very, very tough push ahead. Uh, the stopwatch broken has been sold by Seosh. Make sure he can get uh, the next item as soon as possible. We'd love to finish his mythic in time for the next big team fight. Drakes were traded, by the way. It is uh, loud grabbing their own, so uh, delaying any play towards a dragon soul. But EG not exactly in danger of getting outscaled, so mm -hmm. not not pushing too hard for for any objectives right now. Yeah, if I had to guess, after they lost the fight at bottom turret when Vulcan dove in, they probably said, "Guys, just." Be patient. Just, just chill. Yeah. This, this is a moment where it is absolutely okay to not constantly accelerate the game, knowing how strong their scaling is. Also, Impact is is far away, but does have teleport. Yep. So if a fight happens, he'd likely TP in. He shows damage. Demonic second. Riley's lets you pin your target better, but Demonic is how you burn them down faster if, they're, if you know they're stuck anyway. Uh, just gets the charge. Not really any follow-up damage to the turret. The rest of Loud came down in time. Stun gonna be attempted! Yeah, they, they know they have play. a temporary 5v4, so... And when will the TP come down? Finally now comes through. A fling back. It's so much damage, and Inspired will drop! But the team fight could be good. He ults Croc, and Croc the killer splash. buys a second. But you're still always killing this man. He ults, he's still stuck. The stopwatch burned. He might Does get out. have flash, and it means he lives. Health bar low, but there's no fight left. Or is there? Impact Ooh. shut down. He needs a shield, doesn't have it! But the dive in is good enough for Azir, a double kill! And it's a re-engage, just barely by the skin of their teeth. Evil genius has just turned the fight. So close by Loud, and I actually love the look that Robo had there, knowing that Impact was on 
mid-wave, and it would be at least a full channel of teleport before anyone could join. They get inspired, they nearly get impact, but then, because they could not finish him off, the damage just doesn't stop it. Yeah, they basically just fire at JoJo. Inspired then looks to kind of play a little bit of frontline, but gets hooked, can't alt early enough, and they burst him down. So from here, I also like how much time Croc buys. So he knows he has flash alt. There's there's an actual circle we can't see here. That's the end of the Mordecai's Ralty. Stopwatch again, he's only gonna get to do that once. Flashes out afterwards to stay alive, and now impact is overextended, but now you can see how much that demonic just keeps burning with the EQ landing from Impact. JoJo picks up the double. Yeah. Harry so cleans up the third. It'll get him. I think that kill would have been huge. That would have been someone getting shut down. I mean, he was down like 120 health, right? Like, Triumph just healed him for a third of his health bar. Very big deal on that one. So, stays alive, but that got close. He's got his own stopwatch now, realizing how dangerous that was going to be. Robo gets ulted under the tower. JoJo Pion able to be okay on that one, ultimately. You can see, yeah, huge damage out of the mages on the EG side. Impact had all the gold, but honestly, JoJo was just able to free hit that fight. Well, he could kill someone here if he wants. Big stun, and you're just locked down. Ten owns. Nice sniper shot. Doesn't get flashed. I think it would have been up at that point in time. It's up now, certainly. That's actually allowed Kawhi to get in, land the shot, yeah. and get one. So now it looks like Baron is on the table. It absolutely is, and they just need to find a way to see where Croc is beforehand to allow Impact to alt him. Make it so they can't steal the smite, and they'll have a 5v4. So EG will ideally peel for this fight beforehand, but they can also just take the Baron. Yeah, Squire's Bloom reveals, but there's a Blast plan. He can always ult in. Mordecai's nowhere near. Oh, so they really can't burn this well. one too much already. They've killed one, and looking for a little bit more. Now pushing over the wall. Croc can steal it. Mortalty is up, though, so they can get vision on him. Impact holds left-hand side. They don't see him. They still don't, indeed. 1600, he's got to see him. Oh, found him. And now Croc can't do anything. Of course, he's going to go back to fall anyway. The rest of the fight is going to be a freebie. Impact knows he can shield in a second, and oh that ulti means nothing. You save the shield for a third. He gets the kill. Actually, a raw solo kill in the death realm. And this one is going to be in Baron. Tin owns respawns. It doesn't matter. And Baron will be claimed. Evil geniuses scaling in the play-in group stage and nearly sealing the deal in the second seed. Yeah, 11,000 gold lead now. Gonna wanna rush out of the base to stop this Mountain Drake objective bounty to be sent over, but really just some desperation by Loud right here. And I mean, EG took a ton of damage from Baron, but with how far ahead they are, uh, Impact is literally just waiting until he can see Viego. And since Viego doesn't want to be shown anyway, there's only three people on Loud that can fight. Look at Impact just walk through that a misfortune open. Oh yeah, by the way. Care. Yeah, it loses his shield. And from there, now there's two, only two people on Loud that can fight, Robo and Brand. So it's just pretty hopeless with them trying to buy time for a possible Baron steal. Well played by EG overall, not being impatient, not flipping the Baron, and slowly killing every member of Loud. Yeah. What's funny is by happenstance, Croc could have ulted to immune mortal. You are unstoppable. I think unstoppable should break mortal. If I, I, so. if I, if yeah. I believe that correctly, um, I could be wrong, but that means he actually could have immuned it, just like ulted Baron for damage and been like, stab, stab, smite, <laughs> and actually had a chance of getting it. Um, if I recall my interactions correctly, could be wrong again, that would but be I'm pretty sure. Play and that would have, but like, and technically, it's half second cast time. That is theoretically playable, but sure. how many games you play against Mordecai? Not that many. And here we are in this situation with Baron on the Rebel Baron Power. Red Bull Baron Power play. Probably worth getting those correctly. Uh, 1,500 gold growing now. 2,300 gold to Evil Geniuses pushing out for an inhibitor. Yeah, nice objective bounty. Oh, that's an ult. Look, that's oh, Robo. That's Robo. He'll stun. He well, buys he... a lot of time with that one. But guess what? You see the little blips? Jojo Pion is here. Burn. The burn might kill him. Indeed it does. Demonic Embrace oh. makes impact godlike 7 and 0 on the Mordekaiser. That means bot lane turret is down. That means the bot lane inhibitor is down. Impact absolutely throwing EG on his back here. Solo kill in the previous game against DFM on Aatrox. Gets the counter pick Mordekaiser, which has just been so flawlessly piloted this entire game. 23 minutes and EG is knocking on the door of their second inhibitor. Mid tier two drops. Here we are on to the third one in this middle lane. Robo spawns in one second. No death from available, so free target access for Loud if they can get it. 
Wall comes up, maybe going for Broke. Mort's sequestered away. Ult comes in onto Inspired, puts his own pillar down, and it's gonna be a stun. Notice the slow, will there be a follow through? Yes, Inspire gets the kill. The shuffle on in, but the stun turns it around. Jojo couldn't stop watch, but the health bars are high enough. A stun of Vulcan, he will survive the towers with 100 health left, but the re-engage might still be good. Robo wants the front line, Croc hitting for what he can, but Mort comes oh. back in. Q flash gets a kill, he stop watches. Shield is when, shield is now, and he is not going to die. Thank you for the triumph, Elf. thank you for for a couple of They're more. They're so low, though. Kino's you know, gonna chase him down. He's Inside got flash the base. But the minion's gonna block a lot of this. Fling, <laughs> it's gonna hit. It's a stun. It's a great kill. He's got a bit of gold back in. But it's a 13,000 gold deficit for Lau. Yeah, overall, actually, defense accurate, though. Both Nexus turrets still alive. They're gonna lose the two inhibitors anyway, so they live to defend another day. Still couldn't get that Mordekaiser bounty. That's the closest thing. Uh, if they want to have a hope, and now Impact also with Zonia's, so burning that stopwatch doesn't matter. EG now just gonna pop out of base, use those two super minions to create pressure, and try and get that third inhibitor. Don't want to play with their food too much, even though they are in a absolutely, massively powerful position. Yeah, really nice. Cool to see Impact pull out his champion pool. I'm, I'm always really such a fan of... of Players finding really good answers into such common meta picks. I mean, yeah. so much of the summer split was defined by a ton of Sejuani top. That was such a frequent blind pick. I think actually all year, I think it was big in spring as well. And then in summer, it became a flex for jungle. But there were so many games as champion, and I feel like we didn't see a lot of hard counters, but Impact has uh, crushed it so okay. far. Vulcan overdiving into actually four people. Yeah, that wasn't good. Nope, loses a flash, but he stays alive. It's okay, though, he says. Yeah, they've got enough to work with, honestly. The flash was up, I mean, what use of spell if you don't burn it? If you never flash, do you even have flash? Yeah, is that how that works? Yes, because the threat of flash is very powerful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Well, Vulcan longer has flash for the next four and a half minutes. True. May as well have taken Exhausting Night, Leona. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Zero, two, and 12 even has the uh, even shroud to get the engage that much stronger on his way towards Zone Annapolis. It's going to be turret going down. It's now the third inhibitor going to be cracked going to be even stronger waves coming through. A minute and a half from the third, well, the second Mountain Drake, the fourth overall Drake of the game. It would be EG's third. We get all the numbers in that one. Yep. And do they siege for more? Do they actually play it slowly? I feel like you just see yeah. one, try to find it. Fling's not going to land. It's a little tricky, and you need to wait so long for the double supers to actually arrive. The double supers haven't even spawned yet. That's what happens when you get all three inhibitors down, is instead of one super in each wave, you get two. You can see There's them coming out of the base right now, but uh, it's it's a long wait. They could stay and wait for it, though, if they don't get poked too hard. Stopwatch on two. The crucial soul laners of Evil Geniuses have a Zonia on the one side, a stopwatch on the other. Should be safe against most scary engages. As wave comes on in, a little bit of poke back and forth. Seismic Chef nearly lands on his fire, but not quite. Still staying alive. Proc on the side. They find that first stun. Jojo gets a stopwatch. Backline dive comes through, and it's going to kill off Bronze. A stopwatch now burned as well to stay alive for longer. Croc back inside the fountain to flash in. Cowrie gets another. A legendary streak now for the top laner. Impact level 16 on the Mordekaiser, and Cowrie just crushes down the minion wave. Robo will be pulled right back in. Runs to safety, but sniped down by the AD carry. Cowrie, legendary himself, 10, 1, and 4. A scoop gives him a double kill. The turrets will fall. Everything will drop. EG put the third L in the tag as the CV lol will fall to the third seed. Evil Geniuses take second. Impact the man of the hour. 9-0-10 yeah. and 10 on the Mordekaiser. His opponent, Robo, 0-8-4. and four. Very important for EG. They will now play in two days against the winner of Mad Lions and the Saigon Buffalo, whereas DFM and Loud will be playing a best of five tomorrow and then have to face RNG for their chance at the group stage. So EG, it's not the perfect result for them today. They were in a position where a group stage win against DFM could have given them a tiebreaker against Fnatic to possibly just get out of the group. Yep. But this is the next best thing. They get two tiebreaker games, they get more settled on stage, and they play two solid games against yep. DFM and Loud. And we look at our top seeds from the various groups, right? Fnatic number one, D-Rex number one, EG number two, RNG number two. And we knew coming in, there's only four teams getting out of yeah. this play-in group stage. And there were five teams from top four, from top four leagues, right? Yeah. Because there's two LEC teams here. So someone, maybe both, is not making it out, right? Yeah. Mad Lions, Saigon Buffalo, Evil Geniuses, only one of those three teams is making it out of the group stage. Yeah. Expectation, 
based on group stage results, is that's going to be a battle in two days of EG versus Mad Lions. Mm. And is Mad Lions now the only LEC team to ever fail in play-ins twice? Is EG the first LCS team to fail in play-ins? Because it's been an immaculate run so far for the league. It's going to be fun to watch for all the same. Uh, again, that match, if Mad Lions win, is in two days. Yeah. Tomorrow is a double best of five from the third and fourth seeded team. So it's DFM versus Loud. Yeah. That is one of the battles. And on the other side, it is that Saigon Buffalo Mad Lions team. Yeah, and we'll have to figure out if if EG solved anything or if they just started playing better. This was their first red side win. They saved counterpick for top lane. They actually found, I think, a very strong team fighting composition. I think both these last two games, they had stronger team fighting than they did, at, at least in their losses. Oh, yeah. So there's that constant balance of, okay, we need to play fast. We need to win lanes. We need to get turrets. We need to get rift heralds versus just okay, let's play well in lane because we have Impact and yep. JoJo and they can solo kill people and have better scaling. So that's what I think they found in these tiebreaker games. We'll see if it can work against their eventual opponent in two days. All right, we're going to find it all out in a couple of days here because we're going to figure out who else is getting out of the plans to join DRX and Fnatic who made it earlier today. It's time to hand it over to State from Analyst Desk for World's Cooldown. North America did it. That is fantastic camera work. Jojo, the eagle that is no longer bald because he has a hat, is extremely <laughs> happy. And Raz... It's still bald, it's just hidden. Oh, really? Uh, oh, I, don't right. yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That's not how it works. Now, before we get to celebrating EG's wins in the tiebreakers, I want to bring us back and remind everybody how the day played out. So can we roll the clips of how everything started with my boys Fnatic taking down Beyond Gaming, Chronicle? And Fnatic was the favorite coming in. I think yesterday's loss against Loud kind of set them back, set them straight again. Um, really felt like they were overwhelmingly uh, the stronger team. Uh, besides that one win where the draft didn't really work out, they made a couple of crucial early mistakes. And yeah, uh, unfortunately for Beyond, they were never really able to get anything done in this game. Yeah, and I overall just really proud of uh, Wonder's performance there in his Dragus, but then we look towards this game. Uh, and all in all... Oh, look at that oh angle. Oh, God, you love to see it. That actually makes me even more mad watching Aatrox from that angle dumpstering people, Raz. <laughs> yes, I mean... I thought this was just another great performance from Loud. Uh, Loud has just been making a statement throughout the group stage. And this one, I felt like you got to see that part within the Chiefs, the Oceanic team, finding ways to fight back multiple times. So it wasn't a clean game, but then we got to see just great team fighting from Loud once again to just clinch the win. And I think that looking at what we see here from Loud, um, we saw a lot of that even in their game just now. It's not able to really pull it together as uh, looking at the game that was played by RNG here was, I think, just what we'd expected, right? Yeah, we're on to Death not, FM EG no, at the moment. Death no, FM EG, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. EG <laughs> surprised by Death FM. And it was just this man right there. Evy, 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 multiple times did he get multi-man Meganar ultis that he was able to just clinch the win. I was really happy about this part of the game for Evil Geniuses being able to net the Baron, but then it was the back half of that fight that nailed them in the coffin. Now, this particular game was obviously not for standings. Both teams coming in at 0-4. Both teams eliminated from playoffs. But I think it was very nice to at least see Isaris Gaming picking up the victory. Several of those players are from Mexico City. It's an Argentinian organization, but they did it. They did it in front of a home crowd. What really stood out to me was the interview afterwards and uh, seeing how much it meant, right, to the, to the players to have a performance like that in front of their home crowd. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Say has been here multiple times, but there's been <laughs> first time for, oh God, this is just a moment. Yeah, yeah, it is a moment. I will say though, Mad Lions definitely put up a fight. I think Agreed. DRX still, um, you know, pretty predominantly in control throughout the course of the game, but there were opportunities for Mad Lions to pick up those wins. I don't think DRX were oh, in control, sorry, though. Thank you. I it's think, I think Mad did really well. Oh, my <laughs> word. I forget they, were, they threw a Baron. They threw a Baron. It's okay. I remember now. It's I scrubbed, okay. I scrubbed it from my memory. I scrubbed it from my memory. So, this is Probably what I was talking best. about earlier. There yeah. we go. Uh, this game was uh, what you'd expect. RNG showcasing it, even with a draft. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mad Lions. I'm so sorry, but the way you threw that game made me so mad that I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I, I, I was I was waiting the entire uh, play-ins for for regular season DRX to come through, and we got it today. And now everyone finally know like why we didn't expect. Them to and be as you join us back at the analyst desk, 
Can I move out the way? Can you see that yeah, photo? Can you see the crotch? Can you see that photo? Can we get a close that up? That third one? Yes, there we go. I shouldn't really be celebrating this because it was quite a controversial moment, but it did make everyone <laughs> laugh. Um, great job. I'm Boom. back. Evil geniuses managed to dodge RNG on the bracket. They powered through on the tiebreakers. Raz, celebrate. Bring us into how they did it. Yes, this was revenge personified. The, uh, the uh, fact that they ended up losing them earlier, being put in this tiebreaker situation, needing to take down Detonation for Focus Me, it was an emphatic win based off of what I felt like a really strong performance from Vulcan's Thresh. Here is a great fight where Unipon, as you can see on the right side of the uh, fight, had a really difficult time finding an entrance. Found that entrance right here, but immediately lanterned away and was face to face with the Aatrox, and so he was in a really tough spot. Overall, better setup around objectives from Volk, uh, from uh, Evil Geniuses, and better team fight from this squad. And we saw what happened in their loss. A lot of the times, those were just messy, long fights. We saw that all cleaned up. And I think in both the matches, also the one that they subsequently played against Loud, we saw. Well, this game was really just Impact kind of smurfing. Uh, but uh, but in the in the game before that. Seeing the playfulness and level of aggression that EG had was something that I was really missing from them in the first couple of uh, days of play. Chronically, playfulness is a great word because I definitely thought like, when Jojo dove, dove in 1v3, got yeah. the kill but sacrificed himself, right? That was a bold call. Yeah. Uh, but it did work out for Cotton. Sorry, Jojo Kuhn. I will ask Chronicler, do you think this win against Loud was cleaner, less playful, more serious, more going for the jugular? How do you interpret that? Because to me, both games are one-sided. Both games EG played extremely proactive on the front foot. I think Jat and Freak nailed it in draft. Jat was like, I think this is a good draft for Maud. Freak said, Maud dumpsters Sejuani, and my God, did that come true. Yeah, yeah, that was not, that was not, uh, not a lot of fun to be had. That was uh, top die squared. Bo top, no, no. Bro, top die squared. Impact standing by with Law. Welcome back to Mexico for the Verizon Post game interview, last one of the day, and I'm here with the victorious Impact. Thank you for joining me. Impressive game, I want to say. Jat during the cast was saying that Impact does more damage on Mordekaiser than any other top laner. What do you have to say to that? I mean, just, just top game, you know. Just I'm better, <laughs> so what I do? I mean, just my Mordekaiser is better because. Um, I don't know what I say, just top game, no? It's yeah. like, I just understand Mordekai's champion more, how using E better. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of messed up to late game fight, I think, but I still play well, so just top gap. Top gap, N nice way to get back <laughs> at the loud team. I think the fans are going to love this. Um, the, the, Christina, you were hovering GP and Mordekaiser. What did you make the decision to go for Mord in the end? Oh, uh, I mean, just poor carry. I can just be more prompt because they have to hook somebody and just one shot it. Uh -huh. And I was thinking, if I'm play GP, I got one shot together. And I like, I don't die together. <laughs> and then I'm changed to champion. And I, coach say, what about Monte Kajanem? Oh, good idea. Then yeah. I just take it. It's an, an amazing idea indeed. It, it, it's also been like a super long day for you guys playing back to back tiebreakers. And when I was talking to Vulcan, he was talking about resetting the draft also. But I want to ask you about resetting the mindset because for me it's not easy to go through a day like this especially after losing an important game tell me about the day and how you managed to bounce back uh i mean example like i played a trucks another matchup and i was kind of getting shit on too against ever the dm uh, dfm timeliner mm -hmm. and i changed my mind that how can i play better now watching the video and like wait i was in the in lane and i changed mine i tell my teammate just give me a trucks i can play better i think and after that i think i won that lane so that's my mindset, you know, just fix the what I play bad. And I always say that, like, I think we are team by star, engage pretty bad. Yeah. We got engaged already first. We not try to engage first and we are kind of scared. Then we talk about that how we can team by better and just just go, just go fight. And if we angry, just go and see what happens. And that's how you can play League of Legends, you know, engage first. And if enemy die, enemy can engage skill, then mine's, mm, the character is so out. So just fight first. So then, yeah, I think we pretty well play that. I agree with that, and it's all a matter of mental in the end and how you manage to bounce back. The next step is going to be facing off against the win who wins between Saigon Buffalo and Mad Lions. Tell me about your understanding of the both teams and who do you think you're going to face? Because Mad Lion in best of five, not so great. Oh. And Saigon is like super aggressive. So tell me what you think of this. I think that Saigon, uh, Saigon against, against Mad Lion game, I'm watching that. I think looks like Saigon can win the in best of five because I mean, they pick the setup in, you know, yeah. so just play five people together and just play swing setup in like any style kind of, and they won that, but I think Saigon can fix that problem and they can snipe at it. 
But also, I like it against Saigon more because they're aggressive. I mean, game is more fun. Not like people just been watching the 20 minutes, just one kill, two kill, you know? <laughs> I want bite. I like bite. So I hope Saigon come to uh, against Earth. And they're a really interesting uh, team indeed. All right, we're about to send it back to LA. I want you to flash the biceps one more time. You agree? Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Top gap. Yeah. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That lady doing interviews is great. Uh, just a little bit of inside baseball for you. Right at the beginning of the interview, Law asked Impact a question and then put the microphone down. And Impact was so focused on the interview, he forgot to flash the bicep. That was exquisite planning. Great work between Impact and Law. I love the fact that after Loud steal the show with Bronze's bot gap, the uh, top die squared from Impact steals the show. What do you make of the interview? What do you make of the run, Rez? Ooh, I love to fight. <laughs> That's yes. what he wants. I thought it was great. The personality is showing out perfectly. And on top of that, just like talking about his mentality uh, throughout the group stage, I thought it was wonderful done. Um, Chronicler, can you, can you just explain for me, there was, um, there was a moment there in the interview, Impact said something like, I was playing Aatrox versus Nar, I was getting sh on. Um, and then he went, well, there was like some sort yeah, of it was, advice. Yeah, it was really good advice, and I, I'd want everyone at home to take this to heart. Okay. He he looks at his his thoughts and he said, "I'm playing bad." Yeah, write this down. Write this yeah. down. Yeah. I mean, impact. You know, played an yeah, SKT. Yeah, because I didn't listen. Little world champion, incredible. He said, "I looked at my thoughts. I saw I was playing bad, and I was like, I can play better." And then I did. Oh, I can summarize it. Get good. That's all it was. Yeah. Um, congratulations. That was a phenomenal interview. Impact, thank you so much. Let's take a look at the group A and B, the final standings of where the teams have placed. Of course, Evil Genius is sitting at five and two, three and three, three and three. Those include the tiebreaker games. So of course, there you go. Fnatic, Evil Genius is loud, DFM, DRX, RNG, Mad, and Saigon. This will move us into the completed bracket, the 2022 World Championship play-ins. And as we take a look at the bracket that will start tomorrow, we'll kick things off with Mad Lions playing the Saigon Buffaloes that I have the pleasure of shoutcasting, followed by Loud versus Dead FM, and then EG Royal Never Give Up. Um, Chronicler, I want to come to you first. I believe I want to talk about Mad Lions versus Saigon Buffalo. It's going to be the first matchup of the day. What do you make of this matchup? What do you make of the team's head-to-heads? You can see the statistics from the game they play. The National Geographic matchup. <laughs> <laughs> which which animal is stronger? A lion, lion or lion. buffalo? So, I'm South uh, African, I know this. Both both of these two teams have very clearly shown how they win. For Mad, it's El Yoya and it's Niski. And for Buffalo, it's the bot lane. It's Shogun you look Taki. pretty quick, it kills per minute. Mad Lions have more kills per minute than Saigon Buffalo. If yeah. you'd asked me to place a bet on that, I would not have done so. No, that's, that's pretty reasonable. I think Mad... That has also been their downfall, though. I've seen them get kills and then get like, uh, like, getting it two turrets deep and then lose the game off of that. So, I don't know if that is necessarily a good thing. My main takeaway, though, is that I think that how those two parts, mid jungle versus uh, bot side, are going to interact is going to be key in that best of five. And I'm just excited to see what this team looks like in a best of five. Yeah, because like. The champion pool They're is weird. something we always go to, exactly. Like, yeah. the, you are fighting in a different meta. <laughs> they, are, they are just sending you into a completely different space. The Zakid probably is not going to be played as much, but it's going to be something else. We already know what Taki domestically has been able to go for, like the Camille support. We might even see the Singe support come up. I think you just have to be ready to be thrown into the mud and through, uh, I guess, learning different matchups. Chronicle, I'm going to come to you on this one because during the Impact interview, I asked you to think a little bit about uh, Impact's statement that he thinks Saigon Buffalo could probably take down Mad Lions. Now, just before I ask you your opinion on both that comment, I also want you to factor in, of all of the European teams at Worlds, I might be as bold as to say that Mad Lions have the best uh, preparation uh, when it comes to research, when it comes to support staff. They really have built up a foundation. They built up a reputation for being prepared, well-researched. <laughs> There's only so much research you can do to be ready for Saigon Buffalo because they do not ascribe to really any norms. Yeah, it's a bit of a toughie because me and uh, uh, Kaz, the, the coach from uh, from Mad Lions, go, go a while back. But I'll try to be as unbiased as I can. I think that while Saigon Buffalo have a possibility to win, in a best of five, 
I do think it comes down to fundamentals. As much as you can throw curveballs in draft, Mad Lions today with uh, with how they approach the RX, even though they didn't, I'm getting the win, did really show that they are really good at getting a read on their opponent yeah. Yeah. despite draft. And I think that that will be what, at least in my opinion, will give them the edge tomorrow. But in a best of five, especially as uh, every EU person I've seen this means plenty, uh, best, of, best of five for Mads is... I, I think don't know. Freak has memed it more. I think Freak has memed uh, it more, yeah. if I'm being fair. And also, I mean, they, they haven't won a best of five in summer. Final thoughts, guys, <laughs> before we move on. Uh, they play the map just so much better. I feel like that's what they've staked their name on, They're just being able to play the map with Niski and El Yoya. So yeah. I feel like that's what they will rely upon. I really want to see what, A, yeah, sure, what they can do within the draft, but also just playing around uh, Shogun whenever you can. I feel like Shogun has just been an insanely consistent AD carry. Um, and while the rest of the map, the rest of the team's inconsistent, I feel like if you rely and put in resources and back them up, you'll get games. Now, of course, let's take a look at the other side of the bracket. Loud will be taking on Detonation Focus. I mean, as we contrast the statistics from the players' group stage, Loud up a thousand gold, up 600 XP, saving kills through time in a major lead is the crucial one for me. 35% to 2%. And if I can cast your minds all the way back to the beginning of the group stage, Loud had lost that game early on the day and then bounced back and smashed. I mean, Raz, what do you make of this BO5? What do you make of what you've seen from the teams thus far? far and maybe how they're going to adapt to a series meta really shocked people may not have known but i flip-flopped from the very beginning i thought from the very Bro, start you are the biggest flip-flopper in league of yeah, legends it was the it was the ghost flip-flop we didn't even know it was i had it so i thought first right from the beginning before play and started that loud would be the worst team between the two saw day one flipped it and said that nation focused me wouldn't win a game yeah was wrong on that one too for me the door is wide open between both of these teams with how Unique they are, specifically with how gung-ho uh, Brazil, or at least Loud is, in terms of team fighting and playing towards that, and how unique that nation focused me are playing towards both side lanes. So when I say side lanes in particular, bot lane and top lane. Yeah. Um, so I feel like... There's no other side lanes. Just say, just say. <laughs> at least part of the game, all right? When bot lane's playing a bot lane. Uh, Nicola, what do you make yes, of the, the, the matchup? I, I kind of want to follow Rez uh, that... Even though the stats on paper look a lot better for Loud. Yeah, uh, and, 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 no, yeah exactly. What we just saw. And I'd argue that they have a lead. I don't think it's by any given means a, uh, a, a the type of lead where I'm like, okay, this is like a very uphill battle for DFM. Especially because DFM, I think this is where the, the international experience really shines through. We always keep going back. This team is DLGL representative. And in a best of five scenario, I think having been in this type of positions before and actually making it out, I think is is a really big help. Yeah, I mean, recency bias really matters here. Like yeah. I, even though the, the whole of the group stage has been really working out for Loud, today has been really strong for Detonation Focus yeah. Me. It really feels like they're uh, finding their groove, and I think this next best of five is going to work well for them. Okay, I uh, am about to wrap it up, but Chronicler, would you give me permission to pick on Raz for a moment? Don't do it. I've been bullying you all day. Deny no, it. I, I, I don't know why, why, why you need to do that. Raz has been really peace. nice. Love and oh, peace. So he he's actually, yeah! he's actually oh, slapped me today, the, but... The producers are telling me I have to do it. Yeah, yeah, what? They're saying I have to do no, it. No, you don't. Raz, okay. seeing as though you have been incorrect on your predictions for Loud on day one, True. Dead FM on day two, True. And seeing as though you completely messed up your 90-50-10 and said there was a 50% chance, one that you knew was going to happen, that Dead FM would not even win a game. <laughs> and Wait now a minute. they were in a tiebreaker scenario with EG. They won what are you way do? more games. What are you going to do? You need to make a prediction right now. Loud versus Dead FM and you are forbidden from flip-flopping, right? Okay. I am making this clear now. I think that nation focus me are going to win that series versus loud and it's going to be 3-1. Okay, now what I can say as that was my final question. He's been wrong in every other prediction that means loud will be winning that series. That's it from us here in LA what? on behalf of myself, the casters, the entire broadcast Ignore team him, man. who have had four long days of games. Congratulations to our teams and commiserations to our losers. We will see you more later for world play-ins knockouts tomorrow. The Christian Yes! That over yes! There. Production! This. That is amazing! It's JoJo the Bird. That is amazing. We love you all. Good night. Ah! <laughs> but hold on now. Humanoid and Minji getting into a bit of a scrap. Minji with a stolen ulti. Humanoid's trying to run away. A little bit more damage. And Minji with a solo kill on Humanoid to open the game.
Fight more, fight more. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Good fight, good fight. I think really good. Nice, nice, nice. Now no flash, now no flash. Yeah. Oh, Humanoid getting caught here, though. Stasis is gonna protect him. And now the Aphelio Salty immediately turns the fight in the favor of Fnatic. It's already two down, already three down. The beautiful. The beautiful. What the? They still look to fight back a little bit, but they can't do a thing. The Chiefs are being crushed, and Lau are the ones smashing them. They're seeing if maybe they can make some kind of a miracle happen. There it is. He alley oops two of them back into the wall. They've got Vulcan, but Unipon is down. Bullet time over the wall. Evie gets shredded by it as he arrives, and now he could be in some trouble, but he slams two into the wall with the ulti. Evie gets away. Jojo dies. EG is crumbling. Now the fight continues. ADD still fighting through him. Beautifully done. That's it. That's what they were looking for. Now, you're getting dope. It's a bad time. Holy Phoenix staying alive, just barely somehow ready to go turn around. Holy Phoenix lives. Starscream with a slam back into the wall, but it won't matter. Israel is just beating him to death with the gold lead. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go,